Hold on, Caro, hold on. Tony! Ah! So many Shambas to shape. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice. While learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on this journey and share in the farmers' experiences on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Carol, I've just received a text from you, but I don't understand what you're saying. It says, I have a formal so GTR. <laughs> Tony, that's the language of Generation Z. It simply means, truth be told, I have fear of missing out, so I got to run. Simply means we are late, we should be going to the Shamba. Really? Oh, yes. Well, I never. <laughs> Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. Today, we're in the western county of Bungoma with a young farmer called Fred. My name is Alvin Fred Haemba. I am 26 years old. I have been doing farming for about two years. This was my family's land, but there was no much farming going on. So I decided to take it with my cousin and my brother and try to see what we can get out of this land. I have the passion for farming and I am finding this farming very cool and it has opened for me so many opportunities have food for our family and also to have money for the family. Fred's family land is 18 acres. It's so great to see the next generation taking up farming. Let's see how we can help him. It's great to be here. Freddy. Yes. You are generation Z. Z, Z. So sometimes they call you Difre? Difre. Ah, you see, I know these things. Did you even how know that? How do you know these things? Ah, I have connections. <laughs> so you're digital. Yeah, very digital. Why, why have you decided to be a farmer then? Money is in farming. Ah. Excellent. What did you say again? <laughs> Money is in farming. That's Good. it. Money is in farming. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I am trying to use the new technology about the things I am trying to do on farming. As per now, I'm doing chicken rearing mm -hmm. and beekeeping mm -hmm. and also passion fruit farming. Let's start with chicken. I go buy some eggs, then I put in the incubator. Mm -hmm. I hatch, brood them. Mm -hmm. After that, I begin to sell to the farmers around. Uh -huh. mm. So what's your challenge there? I've just got a small space. Uh -huh. yeah. mm. now, you've mentioned about passion fruit mm -hmm. and also about bees. Yeah. Any challenges there? I am doing it for the first time. I don't have enough knowledge. That's why you are here and I know at the end, I'll be okay. Ah, Perfect. I, Perfect. Lo I, lo I love you already. <laughs> ah. Some of the soils in Western Kenya are highly acidic, but there's always a solution. So we have invited Shadra Kakura, a community resource trainer, to tell Fred about a particular solution that is easy and cheap to make on your farm. Vermiculture. What is Vermiculture. Vermiculture is a way of rearing earthworms, multiplying them to be more for you to do now vermicomposting. Mm -hmm. So you are growing worms. Yeah. Have you ever heard of that? I've never thought of that. So why should a farmer grow worms? They help you in digesting the organic matters, turning them back to the compost. First, you will get a compost that is you can use to plant to feed the soil changing your soil if it was acidic, back to neutral. So vermiculture is a growing of worms to make vermicompost. Like traditional compost that uses manure and plants found on your farm, vermicompost adds skin nutrients to your soil, helps reduce soil acidity, improves soil structure, keeps the air flowing, and helps to keep water in the soil. Plus, there are other benefits too. Also, you can use worms. If you have a fish pond, you will use to feed your fish. If you have uh, poultry, you use it to feed your poultry. Then it will reduce the cost of buying food for your for chickens. Economically also, you can get money by sale of worms 
and the manure. And we have byproduct like vermi juice. You can use it as a top dresser. And also you can use it as a foliar feed to your crops. Vermiculture has many uses. One, it gives you a nutrient-rich compost. Two, you sell the worms as animal feed. And three, the liquid byproduct called vermijuice can be sprayed on your plants to add nutrients. So, how do you make vermi compost? First, we need to build a shed for the vermiculture, which will protect them from the sun, rain and predators. So, where can I keep the worms? We have got worm beads. Yes. Like a drum. Okay. Size of a drum. Okay. So after that, you have to get ballast. That will be your first layer for easy flow of water. Then you cover your ballast with a sack. After that, you introduce a very small layer of sand. Then you sprinkle the water a bit. Then rotten manure. You sprinkle the water a bit. After that, you introduce organic matters. Those are dry matters and green matters. You sprinkle the water a bit. And then you introduce worms. The growing of worms has begun. You will need three kilograms of red worms for a 200 liter bin. The worms will multiply and then start to create the vermi compost, which will be ready in six to eight weeks. Now that we have finished, how do I manage it? First, make your timetable of feeding the worms. So, the worms need to be fed on a weekly basis. First week, they need dry matter like hay or wilted grass or napier. The second week, give them leftovers from the kitchen. And in the third week, fruit like avocado or watermelons, but not fruits with citric acid. You should keep the compost moist, but not waterlogged. Prevent the worms from suffocating. For more information on where to get the worms, please contact iShamba on 0711082606. And how many of these can a farmer make? He can make as many as he wants. I will try to manage 10. 10? Yeah. You love worms. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Oh, okay. Ah, there you are. Here is where I like to spend my time. So what is this? Fridge? This is an incubator. Incubator? Yeah. Right now, I am hatching some chicken. Its capacity is 1,100. All at once? All at once. So what happens after they are hatched? I have to get them out of the incubator mm -hmm. and put them in their brooding room. I have just got a small area that cannot uh, accommodate the all of the oh, chicks. Oh, it cannot accommodate all of them. Yeah. All right, okay. Uh, let me just have a peep. Mm. All right, Shamba Chef is here. Let's see what we can do. Okay, okay. Right, see you in a bit. Me too. Okay. The incubator helps to hatch a large number of healthy chicks, but Fred needs help with keeping them healthy once they have hatched. A vast Lamek Walela from Bungoma County Youth Visionary Network to give him some advice. So as an expert, after doing an inspection on where he keeps his chicken, what would you advise? First of all, Fred, I would like to congratulate you uh, because it is not easy to have such a project, bearing in mind that you are a youth. The only challenge I've experienced, uh, the room you have been using for the brooder is, is in the house. Actually, it is not recommended for the brooder to be in the house. There's no maximum, you know, aeration. Mm. The lighting is also a bit tricky. You, you, you only have one window, yeah. one opening. Yeah. The brooder is small, so when they are inside there, there's a little bit of stress. You know, they suffocate and die. Yeah. So as an expert, how can you advise our farmer? They can construct himself a good structure outside the house, a place where people cannot easily pass, you know, they will transmit diseases to, to the brooder. 
Uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, were the feeders okay? Were the drinkers okay? But one thing I noticed that there are few numbers, considering to the number of chicks he's producing. All so. right, so Shamba Shape Up is going to try and see whether we are going to be able to move you five steps Ahead. shaped up. <laughs> With clear instructions from the expert, Kamau and team have started building a brooder away from the house. And wow, look, the roof is already going up. Getting a good harvest in your shamba is just half of the chain. There is more. There is always more to farming. But doing things right at each part of the chain is a way to make money. Choosing who to sell your products to, when to sell, and for how much are all important decisions to make. We have invited Diba Kone from Ilri to help young Fred build on his knowledge. When I was in university, I did Bachelor of Commerce, and it's really helping me to balance some financial issues on the farm. Let me start by asking you about uh, your last harvest of maize. Was it good for you? For that time, I think it was good for us because we had not invested a lot into it, but the outputs were better. How did you sell it? People came to the farm and bought. Then we also took some to a neighboring institution. Oh, yeah. Do you think you got a good price? Mm, not that much. Because you need the best price. So yes. you just need to compare what the institutions like uh, National Cereals bought, also compare it with the, what the schools give him in terms of price, and also individuals that come to his farm. So then he can decide uh, which is the best price for him to go with. So Fred, yes. the, the people who you said come to your farm to buy your maize, who are they? They are just random people. Many people who come to the farm get are the brokers. If we can remove the broker, and sell directly to the cereals board, I'm sure I can get a better price. It's for him to compare price that is being offered locally and also maybe the neighboring the towns. Maybe the price is even better in Eldoret. Uh, what does it need him to, to get maize there? So he just need to do a bit of research before he rush to sell of what he has at the farm gate. So, first, to make sure you get the best price for your products, you should first choose very carefully who to sell to. You may find that different people will offer you different prices. So, you must compare the market before you decide where to sell. Contact the National Serious Board and compare the prices they offer with those offered by local institutions like schools and by individuals who come to your farm. And remember, prices in other local towns may be better than in your own town. So do your research before you sell. And to get a good price for his maize, what should a farmer do? Once he harvests, there is a way to store for longer. He just needs to study uh, the market better. And when the demand shoots up, now you can sell it at a better price. So he doesn't need to sell it immediately after the harvest. Do you store your maize? For the last year, we stored for like a month. So how, how long can maize last with proper storage? Like uh, two years. Yes. Uh, if it is stored very well. Like the last six months, maize demand was so high because there was no availability of maize in the market. Even the uh, government had to import it from outside. So if we can stay longer, sell it later, I'm sure it could have fetched a better price than immediately after a month of harvest. So, step two, if you can store your product well in hermetically sealed bags, you'll be able to wait and sell some of it when the demand is higher and the price has gone up, rather than selling it all at once when the price is low. So you've got pigs, you've got chicken, you've got cows, you've got lots of crops. How do you know what is uh, making profit and which one you're doing losses? I've not been keen, so I was just putting the whole money together, then I plan for everything. Uh -huh. So he needs to keep records individually, put all the expenses, and then after harvest, how much he has made um, in terms of revenue, 
then you can see in terms of profit how much he has made out of that particular product and then also compare it with the now cow then that will give him which product can make him a good money then he can concentrate and as an accountant record keeping i'm sure you know yeah. about it anyway. and it will help you know where you're making profits or losses yes, yes. all right so uh, shamba ship up has got something for you here a record book thank you and since you're an accountant just open page 1 tell me what you see there in out mm. yeah. so what comes in what goes out. out yes so with the expert advice i'm sure you're on your way to become a good farmer yeah. making farming as a business from all the way from the markets proper storage and keeping good records yeah 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 Meanwhile, the chicken wire and the iron sheet wall are being put in to protect the chicks from the cold and predators like mongoose. Good progress, Kamau. Everything that I have seen going around is going very well. It's like going back to school, isn't yeah. it? Uh -huh. Where is your school good? uniform? <laughs> <laughs> See you after the break. Welcome back to Shamba Ship Up. We are in Bungoma, shaping up our young digital farmer, Fred. The chicken brooder is coming along well. We are fixing up the floor and putting in a new door that can be locked at night. Watch out, Caro, you'll be locked in. Hey there! Do you want more information on the topics being discussed on Shamba Shape Up? We are bringing you the Shamba Shape Up podcast where you can get farming information and tips anywhere, anytime. Join us as we discuss good farming practices and dig deeper. Now, where do you get this podcast? Easy. WhatsApp the word podcast to iShamba on 0748-153-120 to get a link to the podcast. You can also Google us, Shamba Shape Up Podcast. Tundekazi. Welcome to the Shamba Shape Up Weather and Farming News for Kenya. In the coming week, we expect no or very little rainfall across Kenya. North, Upper and Lower Eastern, including Mandera, Wajia, Isiolo, Meru, Taraka, Kitui, Makweni and Kajado, will see very low rains of less than 5 mm in the week. Lower sections of Garissa, however, will get up to 15 mm of total rains. The coastal counties will have moderate rains of up to 15 mm across the week. This includes Lamu, Kilifi, Tukwale. However, Tana River and Taita Taveta will see less than 5 mm of rains in the week, with some sections getting up to 15 mm. Central counties will as well get very low rains of less than 5 mm across the week. This includes Laikipia, Nyandarwa, Nyeri, Moranga, Kirinyaga, and Embu, as well as Nairobi and Kiambu. North, Central, and South Rift Valley will have moderate rains of up to 25 mm across the week. This includes the counties of Transoia, Wasingishu, Nandi, Baringo, and Kericho. The rest of the counties in the region will see less than 5 mm of rains in the week. The western counties will get moderate levels of rains, ranging up to 25 mm in the week. This includes the counties of Busia, Kakamega, Bungoma, and Vihiga. Nyanza region from Siaya, Kisumu, Nyamira, Kisi to Migori will have less than 5 mm of rains across the week, with a few areas getting up to 15 mm. For more tips and detailed weather forecasts for your area, get in touch with I Shamba. Call 0711-082-606. I am Brenda. See you next week on the Shamba Shape Up Farming News for Kenya. So, one thing I like most about the advice that we give our farmers is that one simple solution solves different problems. It's like shooting one bird, two birds, three birds with one stone. Young Fred is an ambitious agribusinessman. He told me earlier he plans to sell honey from his beehives. But he would also like to sell passion foods for market and keep chicken. How can all of those plans work together? Benjamin Cheptai from Mountain Berean is here to help us out. 
as we were walking through your compound, we saw passion fruits you planted along the, the fence, fence. Mm -hmm. which has grown old. Yeah. But today we have come to show you how to grow passion fruit to make money. Okay. We are giving you seeds. Thank you. That is passion fruits. Thank you. After that, we will give you that management knowledge. Number three, we are the market, both uh, local and international market. Saying that the passion fruit that is he's going to plant, you're going to buy it and sell it for him. Yeah. Wow. All right. So you have seeds, you have market. Yes, exactly. Before we get into the passion fruit, thing, yeah, he has bees. Yeah, he yes. has passion fruits. He's also keeping chicken. Is it a good thing to integrate? Doing pea keeping, passion fruits and chicken is very important. Yes. Number one, I'll start on chicken. The chicken waste you will use um, as manure to apply on, on the, passion. the passion fruits. Mm -hmm. The bees will be benefiting from passion fruits, looking for nectar and pollens, yeah. which will assist them to make a lot of honey. Mm -hmm. As I was going through your apiary, yeah. I saw that uh, you are still using the old, old beehives. Mm. You harvested the old brood, honey, you see? Yeah. You taste honey, instead of tasting sweet, it tastes bitter. So as I would adopt uh, modern technologies, yeah. uh, the Langstrode beehives. The Langstrode, we are harvesting clean honey. Okay. And you will get money, my friend. Uh, yeah. When he hears the word money, He's very excited, yeah. which is a good thing. Yeah. Now let's come back to the passion fruit. Today we are going to plant 28 passion fruits. You brought the 28 seedlings? I've brought 28. Each passion fruit is giving 15 kilograms per plant. That's so with lot. your 28 passion money. fruits, yeah. you will harvest 420 kilograms. And we as Mountain Berean, we are buying at 100 shillings. A so you'll make 40. 2000 in this small orchard that we have cited to you today. Yes. Yeah. Are you talking about this this, this place here? This small Where place just that you are seeing here. here. Yeah. So, by the second year, when the crop has fully matured, Fred should be able to harvest 420 kilograms of passion fruits from 28 plants. That's not bad at all. Fred will soon see that passion fruit is a high value crop that can give him a high yield without taking up much space. Young farmers, think about it. And because Benjamin has offered Fred a contract, this means he can sell the whole crop to just one buyer, which will save him time and the cost of going to the market. It's a win-win. Ah, before we think about the money, we need to know if you want to be a successful passion food farmer, what should Freddy do? First of all, you need to do what we call soil sampling and soil analysis so that you identify which elements are missing on the soil. Number two, you need to prepare your land. And when making holes, spacing matters a lot. Mm -hmm. From one plant to another plant is three meters. Mm -hmm. From one row to another row, we are doing at two meters. When digging the holes, the measurements are 60 centimeters by 60 centimeters by 60 centimeters. Make sure that you separate the topsoil and the subsoil. Mm -hmm. The topsoil is rich in nutrients. Yes. Ensure that uh, you leave your holes bare before returning the soil okay. for two to three weeks. You know, passion fruits are deep-rooted plants. You allow the, the hole to crack so that you allow the roots to, to do spread. what? To, to spread. spread. Mm -hmm. After that, we are recommending you to use the well-composed manure. Yes. All right, so after you do that, you're ready to plant your passion fruits? You are ready to plant. Ensure that you plant early in the morning or late in the evening. You know, during the day, the temperatures have risen. Yeah. The passion fruit can be affected with that uh, strong light. Yeah. After that, ensure that you apply water. All right, good. You can as well as mulch. Uh, mulch will assist in moisture conservation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So are you ready to kill one bird with three stones? Very ready. You've heard? Yeah. What the bees can do? Yeah. What the passion's food can do? Yeah, exactly. And how they are related? Yeah. It's been quite a journey for our young farmer, Fred. Now he has a proper chicken brooder, his chicks will be kept healthy once hatched, and he can sell them at a better price. 
The round brooder will prevent the chicks from overcrowding in a corner and suffocating. The foot bath now has disinfectant and the brooder is also being disinfected to avoid disease harming the chicks. The curtains will help in controlling the temperature inside the brooder. We now have enough feeders and drinkers for the number of chicks we are bringing. It's about time we bring the chicks from the incubator to their new home. Oh, they look good. You can see they are running around. Mm -hmm. yeah, that means they are stress free. Okay. Yeah, they are stress free. They are stress free. I'm impressed with the phone they was done, the construction. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen the openings. Yes. They allow the airflow, mm -hmm. aeration. Uh, Why is it important to have this light on? Uh, they are cheeks. What do they need to see? You should ensure the lights to be on always, especially during the night, for them to see what they are eating, to see the water they can drink. Some of the feed has been put on the flat surface. Why yeah. is that? And we have the feeders. These are chicks that have just come out of the incubator. Yes. They even don't know what they're eating. Mm -hmm. So you will have to at least train them slowly for them to get used to the test of the feed. All right, yeah. OK. You should uh. ensure you have cartons or magazines, because if they eat the wood shavings, it may lead to constipation. Mm -hmm. I advise Fred to be aware of the vaccination schedule on how you're supposed to vaccinate your chicks. Yes. So, to begin the vaccination schedule, start with Marex on day one. And what next? Ensure after the 12th to 14th day, uh, you give them Newcastle, Newcastle vaccine. And then from the 16th to 18th day, you are supposed to administer Gumbora. So I would like to advise him for him to keep cleanliness. People should not be moving in and out, you know. The only one person is allowed to operate in the brooder. Uh, you see people walking outside there, they have gone in different places, they have touched different stuff. Yeah. You know, when they come in, they come with bacteria, diseases, you yes. see. When they come in, it's you who will lose. Yeah. All right, so thank you very much, Lamek. Yes. And I hope this is going to be a boost towards making you become a better Agri business yes. entrepreneur. Exactly. Thank you so much. Wow, wow, wow. Here ah, I am. Here You're right I am. on time. Come in, come in, come in, come in, come in. Yeah, come Carol, in. finally I've understood what form is. I was fearing missing out on this. You actually missed. Now yes, you've seen yes. what Lamek was doing. Yeah. Excellent work. What, what mm -hmm. do you think of our farmer, Lamek? Our farmer is very promising. Mm -hmm. He has the potential to do more. We've been here with you. What do you think of the shape of? The shepherd is the best thing I've met since I've begun farming. Mm -hmm. uh, you have given me enough lessons that I believe will make me do more in agriculture. Yes. Yes. So, ah, different. Yes. Our work is done, yo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so until next time. Bye! Bye.